Hello. So in the last episode, uh, we laid out the floor, but uh, I moved the floor down just a touch so that it's half a meter below where it should be, so that when I add the actual flooring here, it will look, uh, it will stand above, it won't share the exact plane and we won't have any Z popping. So what room do we want to start with? Well, I generally recommend starting with a square room because that's generally going to be easy and it's going to ease you right into the questions, uh, easy right into the, to the difficulties of the room design like so. So this is going to be our bathroom floor. Um, it's not at the right spot though, so let's just drag it up. Because it was on the first floor, we needed it on the second floor. Now the question here is how do we want to do walls? And there's a lot of answers to that. None of them are, are particularly good. Unity just implemented vertex popping, vertex locking, and so I'm going to build my rooms with the assumption that that's how we're going to assemble them. And therefore, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be doing an extending up a meter like this. And that was just a standard extrude. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be moving each of these edges in a tenth of a meter, like that. The problem is if I'm not in this mode, it goes by whole meters. So it is a little bit annoying to have to select and then go back into this mode, but it's not too bad. Like that. Now you can scale down, but it's very, very difficult to get it to scale down by 0.1 in each direction, so I don't try that. Don't generally try and bother that. Um, but once you finish that, you can bring it back down into the surface, like so. And you have this nice little setup where you've got uh, a, a 10 centimeter ring around your room. And that means that we can have this vertex butt up against the, the same vertex in the next room and this vertex in the same way. And that'll give us a nice, uh, um, a nice 20 centimeter wall. Uh, which is roughly the right, roughly the right um, depth for for a wall in this case. Uh, so the next step would be just to extrude straight up. We want three meters, so that's what we'll give it three meter high room. But this room happens to be inside out, so we're going to select all of these, like this, and this one too, and we're just going to flip them, like this. All right, so now we have a room, and this is the bathroom. And you can see that if we were standing inside of it, we would be looking at the walls and being we wouldn't be able to see through the walls, which is exactly what we want. We do have this ring around the edge, this face here. We could delete these faces, but it's not really necessary. There's no reason to. Um, and I find that Unity can get a little confused if you have just floating verts that don't have any faces attached. So we'll leave these faces there. and We'll just deal with the fact that we have four, four quads. Um, extra fluff in each room. But there are some things we do want to add to this room. We want to add a door and we want to add some some vents. So uh, this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. The first thing I generally do is I add the vertical strokes. And you can see that I've added it such that they are exactly one meter. And that works fine. But the problem is when you want to add strokes along this uh, axis. And let me show you why that's problematic. We'll look at it from above and you'll be able to see. So as I move up, you can see that the, the tapering means that it falls off of true. So I can't get a good clean line because uh, it's going to be one width at the edge of the room and another width at the middle of the room. Normally that wouldn't matter because the edge of the room is totally irrelevant, but in this case it matters quite a lot because the lock to is done on the outside line rather than the inside line, which means that I can't lock to the actual um, Excuse me, I can't lock to the actual meter on the inside, only on the outside, and that's that's not going to cut it. So instead what I'll do is I'll take the uh, walls, the individual walls here, and I will cut them up as I need to individually, rather than trying to do it uh, via a loop cut. And now this does produce topology that some people might not like very much. So it's up to you whether this is something that you care to do or not. But basically, you can use the cut, and if you are exactly um, uh, from the side view or from the front view or whatever, then uh, you should be able to get a cut that locks to um, that locks. No, wait, because control puts it in the middle. What is it? It's a uh, I guess not. I thought that there was a way to do that, but control snaps it to the middle. And I don't need
need it at the middle. Well, the middle isn't such a bad place for it, I guess. So we'll go ahead and cut down here, um, cut from here, down here, like so. And then we'll move it, and then we'll cut here, down here. But you can see that I've got a problem here. This isn't on one of my tenth meter lines. So when I add this in, I need to be able to move that so that it's flush with the rest. Now the joy of working with the control held down so much and being careful about it is that I can just move it by zooming in far enough until I reach the point where it clicks by that amount. Or I can hold control, or rather shift. Um, well, that's not it. Shift will give me finer grain control, but it doesn't lock. There we are. Control and shift. I don't know whether you have to hit shift first or what. Um, but shift will give you finer grain control, and control will give you the pop to. So then we can just link it over here. So this is a doorway that is currently two meters high and one meter wide. If you're familiar with actual doors, that's not a very good measurement. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this up like so, and we're going to move this out like so. And that'll give us something that's 2.2 .2 meters high and 1.2 meters wide, which is roughly what we'd like. And then we can delete that face. And now you can see that we've got a doorway and it's all properly lined up. The door won't actually be part of the room. It'll be its own mesh. Uh, we might combine it in, at the, at, in the final stages, but all of our, many of our doors are going to have the same meshes, and therefore they'll just lock into place right here. Now you might be wondering, uh, what about windows or vents or whatever. Well, we definitely want to have some vents. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an event right here. And that I'm going to just use the same cut system. So control and then up to the top, like so. Press space. And that'll do. And then the same thing here, control up to the top. C. Okay, so C is what I was trying to do. So uh, cut to the top, press control, and then I have hit C, it'll lock to camera, um, and that'll mean that uh, it'll always be straight up. Now this is a tricky thing because if you do that when you're not in an orthogonal straight on view, it locks to the camera's plane rather than to anything else, um, which is hugely problematic, uh, so, so worry about that. There we are. And this will be the quad that we extrude out to form our. There. We this will be the quad that we extrude out to form our vent. Now, if you have a hard time selecting things, it's probably because you're trying to select through the back face of something, um, and it doesn't understand what you're trying to do. Uh, you can get around that in half a dozen different ways, but generally, I find it's easiest just to rotate until you're in the right position. So we're going to extrude out. There we go. And then we're not going to scale because we need to have it a precise size. And instead, we're going to grab each of these in turn and scale and move them manually. So we're going to go with a half meter. And it's going to be located just below the top. So uh, this is going to be half a meter vent by half a meter vent. Um, something like this. Is that half a meter? I can't tell. It's, uh, oh, it's fallen on the, oh, that's fine, I can fix that. What the hell's going on? It's not... There we go. I actually don't know if that's exactly half a meter by half a meter, but it's okay. It's, it's close enough and then bring it back into line with the rest of the room and then extrude out. And later on we will use this extrusion as a exterior wall vent. And that'll give us some nice interior space, uh, interior clunkiness where that will be something that you can look up and see. But in order for that to happen we're going to have to invert these walls because right now you can see the interior but you need to be able to see the exterior instead. So just select the walls, and it can't select on the far side, so hit Z, and then we'll be able to. Just direction, there you go. 
Now the hallway that we build will have to have the wall here and we'll have to remember about that and worry about that. But as you can see, if we look up into the vent, we'll actually see through from the inside. And that's okay at this point because the vent is going to be its own object. It's going to be its own mesh. Anyway, that's a good way to, to, to start off with modeling the room. And the next thing we can do is we can start on the next room and uh, just repeat the process over and over and over until we've blocked out all the rooms. Um, and I don't know whether this is the most efficient way to do it in terms of speed of, uh, of blocking stuff out, but it does create uh, individual colliders for each room, uh, which turns out to be quite nice in Unity because uh, you can do all sorts of cool optimizations later on.